Okay, I'll just brief what we have seen in the previous session. We have been discussing on deposition and deposition can have two means, methods, chemical means or physical means. That is, we can deposit or develop material on a substrate by means of chemical reaction. Then we call it as chemical means. If there is no chemical reaction involved, instead of physically, a material is removed on a substrate, we call it as physical means. Now, let us go to uh, the next session. In the MEMS fabrication, the second method of depositing on substrate was by physical means. Physical means means there is no chemical reaction. Instead, the material to be deposited on a substrate is moved physically onto the substrate. Physical vapor deposition covers a number of deposition technologies. That means it's a class of deposition methods in which material is released from a source and transferred to the substrate. The two common techniques are evaporation and sputtering. Evaporation is one of the physical method where the material to be deposited will be heated up so that the vapor of the material will be developed and this vapor will be deposited on a substrate. There is no chemical reaction. Sputtering is another technique where high energy particles are allowed to bombard on certain source material so that atoms or molecules from the source material will be knocked out, ejected, knocked out from the surface. And this knocked out particles are allowed to settle on substrate. So that is sputtering. Let us see uh, the working and the concept of the physical vapor deposition and some physical method, physical processes. One is the physical vapor deposition by evaporation. What you see here is an example for evaporation arrangement where here the wafer corrosal, it's a collection of uh, wafers kept on inside the chamber. We call it as a reactor, okay? Now on the uh, another end, there is a table. On the table, the material to be deposited will be kept. Wafers are the material onto which the deposit is to be developed. And the source material is the material that is to be deposited on the wafers. This particular chamber will be evacuated initially to a very low pressure. And this is done for easy evaporation as well as controlled movement of the vapor that is generated. By using vacuum pump, this pressure will be reduced inside the chamber. Now, the source material will be heated up by some means. There are generally two methods adopted in industries to develop the vapor or for heating. One method is called as electron beam heating, where electron beam is used to heat the surface of the source material so that the material will, uh, under this heat, will cause to evaporate. The evaporated particles that are suspended in this are attracted towards the vapors and that will be deposited on the wafers like this. And thus a coating of the evaporated material will be generated here. This is much similar to our conventional process we do at our home. We generally develop, uh, we call it as kajal or something like that, right? Kajal. Silly, we will have a pot. Inside the pot, apply a coating of uh, oil and we will use a candle and that will yeah, burn the candle. Pot will be kept over the candle. So after a period of while, we can see that a black coating that will be developed inside the coating of the pot. And we remove that uh, black coating and that we use as this uh, like casual and all. So this process is similar to that. That is when this is heated up, there will be particle developed because of heating and that will be deposited on the surf inner surfaces. So that's how air coating will be developed. The thickness of carbon that is generated inside the pot when we do it conventionally, it is of micron thickness. Actually, it was a kind of physical vapor deposition technique. In PVD process, the substrate is placed inside a vacuum chamber in which a block of source material to be deposited is also placed. The source material is heated to evaporate. The vacuum is required to allow the molecules to evaporate freely and subsequently to condense on the substrate. 
Now, based on the methods used to heat for evaporation of the source material, there are two popular techniques. I have told you one technique is electron beam evaporation, and the second method is called as resistive evaporation. In electron beam evaporation, an electron beam is aimed at the source material, causing local heating and evaporation of the source material, and the evaporated source material will be deposited on the wafer surfaces. In resistive evaporation, a collection of tungsten resistance, tungsten board, that will be heating, used to heat up. Okay, and that heating will cause evaporation of the material. That is, a tungsten board containing a source material is heated up. And eventually, that will be heated, heated material will be evaporated, and that will be deposited on the surface. Now, sputtering. Sputtering is a phenomenon in which microscopic particles of a solid material are ejected from the surface. I have told you like any knocking out or ejection from the surface after the material is bombarded by energetic particles of plasma or gas. The concept of PVD, sputtering, sputtering is shown here. Sputtering is shown here. Here you can see that the, the red dotted boundary is showing it as a chamber, as a control chamber, or we can call it as a reactor, or as a place where uh, the reaction happens or the process happens. In this chamber, there is a substrate on that. The substrate is kept, and the substrate and the holder is kept as positive anode. On the top, you can see that there is cathode, and that is the target material. Target material means this is the material to be deposited on the substrate. Now, in the sputtering process, typically inert gas such as argon will be passed by giving some kind of energy such as RF agitation, radio frequency agitation, or high electric spark. This gas will be ionized. What happens is argon positive ions are developed. This argon will be moving, ions are moving fast towards the target. And with, by absorbing energy from this, this argon uh, at, uh, plasma will be knocking out the material from the target. The knocked out material will be attracted to the substrate and that will be coating on the surface. This is a phase for, uh, it's, there is no chemical reaction instead the developed knocked out material are deposited on the surface. Obviously, we can understand that even if there is one coating here, so long as the process happens, the coating will be happening over and over and over, like a layer by layer, there can be higher coating happens. That means the control of thickness for the coated material is difficult in sputtering process. The schematic diagram of the sputtering is shown here. Here there is, again, target material kept, the substrate, and that is conducted with the circuit. Now there's a pump to evacuate the chamber. There is argon feed. The argon ions that are bombarding with the target to remove the material, and that will be attracted to the substrate. So uh, in either way, you can show the diagram. In this case, the, the substrate is shown here. Here the substrate is drawn on the top, uh, the top side. Actually, it's not a material at all, important at all. In the chamber, there is substrate and target, and the direction of movement of argon ions, or we call it as a plasma, is controlled by uh, some means. R of sputtering stands for radio frequency sputtering, runs an energetic wave through an inert gas in a vacuum chamber to make the gas ionized. The target material or the cathode, which is to become the thin film coating, is bombarded by these high energy ions, sputtering off atoms as a fine spray covering the, the substrate to be coated. RF magnetron sputtering uses magnets behind the negative cathode to trap electrons over the negative charge target material so that they are free to bombard on the surface and 
the material will be deposited on the substrate. The next step in MEMS fabrication is lithography. Lithography stands for pattern transfer. That means a particular shape will be transferred on the substrate. We have seen that material will be deposited on a substrate. These are not simple, simply or any kind of material. These kind of materials have got the property that these are photosensitive material that are deposited on a substrate. That means these materials can undergo certain changes when it is exposed to light or X-ray. Uh, ray, when it falls on that, it can undergo certain reaction. So we call it as photosensitive materials. So whatever we have seen as deposits are all photosensitive materials. Okay. So photosensitive materials can also be called as photoresist. In this diagram, you are seeing that there's a substrate here. On that, there is a deposit that is a photoresist deposit. We can see a mask having defined opening. So that is a pattern. And you can see that there is a ray passing through the pattern, opening of the pattern. This particular diagram is meant to explain you two words. One is positive resist, another word is negative resist. Let us see what is positive resist and what is negative resist. This positive resist and negative resist, that is a category of the deposit or the resist that is developed on this. It has got certain uh, behavior. Based on the behavior only, we categorize whether it is whether the deposit that we have made on this is positive or negative. Let us see the process. On the deposit, we are allowing the, some rays to fall. So we know that in that region, some kind of reaction happens, some changes happens. Though it is not physically visible, something has happened there. What has happened? Let us see. So that change that is happening here is shown in a different shading. Still, when we look on that, the surface is like the complete surface, but there is some change that has happened. Now, that sub to that substrate, after exposing to the ray, we are taking it for next process called as uh, washing or etching. It is actually the micro machining process. When this exposed, this particular substrate, if it is subjected to developer solutions or etching solution, there are two possibilities. One possibility is that the exposed part can be washed out and the other part, unexposed part, are retained, that is resilient, that is retained here. The second option is that the exposed part are hardened and is retained and the unexposed part are removed in washing. So when the pattern is transferred and the substrate is subjected to, sorry, the deposit is subjected to uh, this ray, if and after washing, if the exposed area is removed, then we call that kind of resist as positive resist. If the exposed region is retained after washing, then we call that kind of resist as negative resist. Again, once the resist is formed on the surface with a defined pattern like this or like this, we can further utilize the pattern for further deposition, that is next layer of deposition. In this diagram, in this diagram, this category of diagram, we, can, we see that the pattern is developed on the surface. That means instead of initially we had given a mask, now the deposited material itself is acting like a pattern. And by using some other chemical, we can remove material from that region alone by exposing it and by washing. So this is method called as pattern transfer by etching. That is, deposited material itself is used as a pattern to further etch the uh, uh, removal of the material. There is another option of using the same pattern here. We are depositing another layer of another material on this and we are using an etchant to remove the base material so that the deposited second layer will be retained over here. So this method is called as a lift off method. Pattern transfer from patterned photoresist to underlying layer by etching. So this is the etching process. Etching, we know it's a familiar word. Removal of, selective removal of material is called as etching, okay? 
So the deposit material can act as a pattern or a mask so that only the exposed region when it is subjected to chemical reaction will be removed, that's etching. The second process is the pattern transfer from patterned photoresist to overlaying layer by lift off. In this lift off process, we have a pattern over that again deposited, then by using some uh, method, we are lifting off the initial deposit so that only the required material will be remained. So in this session, we have seen difference between positive resist and negative resist. We have seen etching by pattern transfer and then, then lift of method of pattern transfer. Let us see the third step in MEMS fabrication, that is micro-machining, in detail in the next session.